Okay, so hopefully you can hear me, and hopefully you can see everything, but we'll just try this out. Um, so projectile motion. Let's look at projectile motion. In projectile motion, the key thing is we define projectile motion to be um, an object moving only under the influence of gravity. So let's just let's just start from uh, this uh, case. Suppose I take a ball and I shoot it horizontally. It's going to go like that. Okay. While it's in its path right here, what forces are acting on it? Don't say it. Don't say the force from the, sh the cannon that shot it. No. It's not. It's not acting on it anymore. The only force acting on it is gravity, which is straight down. I'll write that as mg. Do you see that okay? Let's see. That's a little small. We'll, we'll just try it out. Okay. So, from that, we can write down Newton's second law or the momentum principle, however you want to call it. I'll write that as F that equals MA when you write that. That's okay. And so, in two dimensions, I can write F net X equals MAX, F net y equals m a y. So the only force is in the y direction. There's no force in the x direction. So th this equation says f net in the x direction is zero. So that's zero. So a x equals zero. So in the x direction, I have the following equation can completely describe the motion of the particle in the x direction. x final equals x initial plus v x t, assuming time starts at zero. Okay. Because there's no acceleration, this is just the definition of average velocity as change in position or change in time, but written in a different way. So that's that. Um, with nothing else to say in the x direction. In the y direction, I have the net force is going to be uh, in negative mg, where g is positive 9.8 newtons per kilogram. So I can solve this for ay equals negative g. So that's the acceleration in the y direction. So now I have a constant acceleration. I can use the kinematic equations. I'm just going to write down one of them. You can go back and look at kinematic equations, but this is the important. So in the y direction, I have y final equals y initial plus vy initial times t minus one half g t squared. Just your plain kinematic equation, free fall. The key is this motion is independent of this motion except for the time it takes, so it's just like a ball moving at a constant speed up to there and a ball falling straight down, down to there. And the only thing they have in common is the time. The time it takes for this constant horizontal motion is equal to the time it takes the ball to fall straight down. So that's simple case. Uh, this is always going to be true. Okay. The only thing that you need to worry about is, uh, and then so what would you do? What well, it depends on what you're trying to do. Suppose you're trying to solve for how far it goes horizontally. That's a common case. Well, here if I shoot this ball horizontally, um, I can call the floor down here y equals zero meters. So in that case, the final y would be zero. The initial y would be let's call that h. What's the initial y velocity if it's shot that way? It's not moving at all in the y direction. So the initial y velocity is zero. So that term's gone. I'm just left with this one, minus one half g t squared. Now, I can solve for the time. You see, this is the trick. The y direction I can use to solve for the time, and then use that same time in the x direction. So here, if I, um, let's say I subtract h from both sides, and I get negative h equals negative one half g t squared. 
and then I can divide both sides by negative g over 2, and I get t squared equals 2h over g, t equals the square root of 2h over g. That's not right. Okay? And then I can, if I want to find out how far it went, and if I know the initial velocity, in this case, the initial velocity is all in the x direction. So I can solve for, so let's say it starts at x equals 0, x final is just going to be vx, which is the launch velocity, times t, which is this. Okay, now one more quick case. What if I change this? so that I launch it at an angle with some velocity v0 at an angle theta above the horizon. So what's going to change? Well, what's going to change is now my initial x velocity is not v0 and my initial y velocity is not 0. So I can write vx initial is going to be, let me just draw this like this, v0, vx, the y theta. So there, there you have a right triangle. So using your normal trig rules, vx is going to be v0 cosine theta, vy0, which is just the initial velocity, is going to be v0 sine theta. And then over here, I could do, if I want to find out how far it went, now this would not be 0. My initial y velocity is that value. So this would change and it'd be a little bit more difficult to solve. Um, in fact, if you try to do your normal algebraic rules, you'll fail. Um, you need to use the quadratic equation. If you can't remember what that is, look it up. But you can still find the time and plug it into here. And, and not all, not every single kind of projectile motion problem is going to be the same way. But the key thing is projectile motion, you can treat the x and the y motion separately except they have the same time. In the x direction, the acceleration is 0. In the y direction, the acceleration is negative g. So I went kind of fast because I don't want to make a 10-hour recording, and you can pause it, and you can replay it. So let me know if this helps.